uh, Data and AI team. And first off, I just want to say thank you to Starburst for organizing everything, for making it super easy. Um, and they're an amazing team, both sort of execution-wise and just really nice people. So thank you so much for everything you guys do. Um, so we'll talk about Data Lake House, but I think I have to say something about Gen AI because what could talk today without saying the word Gen AI, right? So let's just let's get it over with, basically, right? Um, so what what are we seeing, right? Well, what are leaders really telling us? And we did a survey um, of about 200, 300 people, mostly sort of leaders in the in the uh, enterprise space, and they basically told us a few things, right? They said 80% of them are using generative AI in their sort of daily lives, which is you know, which I think resonates with most of us. I think we've all used it in some capacity. Uh, but interestingly, 63% of them have said they've used it at work. So that's an interesting data point because number one, it's not as much as 80%, uh, but it's definitely high. Now, why, is it, why isn't it higher than that? When we ask the question about why isn't it higher than that, they've said two things. Number one, a lot of them say the training data for generative AI needs to be on enterprise data. It needs to be on their data. It, it does not, it should not be on data that you can just find fairly easily over the internet or you know, general purpose trained model that you can pick up from some of these Gen AI companies. So that's number one. And number two, they actually prefer it to be primarily on-premise or hybrid. That's a little interesting because I think a lot of Gen AI today tends to be in the cloud or tends, you know, tends to be driven by the Microsoft and the Azures and the Googles. Now, why is that? Why, why do you think 82% of them prefer on-premise or hybrid? When you dig a little bit deeper into that, you start to realize that the key differentiator for generative AI is the data. And where is the best data? The proprietary, trustworthy data lives mostly on-premise. So companies are starting to move away from sort of being more model-centric and a lot more sort of code-centric to starting to worry about the data side of things. And they're starting to realize Great Gen AI ideas don't actually get to fruition if you don't have a really, really good data landscape underneath, right? Secondly, the efficacy of those AI tools hinges very highly on the quality of your data. And then third, uh, the winners in the Gen AI space are those people who are going to be able to leverage their proprietary high-quality data that is most often stored on-premise. So. Clearly, we have to think about generative AI, we have to think about AI in general, about, you know, and link that to a lot of the on-premise data out there. But is it just easy to just use on-premise data? It's actually not. This is really, really hard. I mean, it's very, very hard. How hard is it? It's this hard. I don't know if you guys follow Matt Kirk. Um, he's one of the first smart capital uh, VCs, and he does this landscape every year uh, where he takes basically you know, a, a snapshot of all the companies out there from machine learning, AI, and data analytics, which is why he calls it MAD or MAD. And he does this every year, right? So if you look back at what this looked like in 2019, 2018, it was a, it was a much more manageable, much more digestible framework. Now, it's so big, you can't even read any of the logos anymore. And he's gonna keep on doing this. So this is really hard, and we know just how much proliferation there is. And look around the, the expo floor. How many companies exist today and how many companies are going to exist tomorrow, how many of them existed two years ago and don't anymore. This is a very rapidly changing market, and that's why enterprises find it so hard to manage and deal with this complexity. If, you, if you're in IT, for example, you're looking at this and saying, oh my god, my job's going to get so hard because nothing I do is ever going to stay the same. So they really need something which is a lot more of an easy button, right? And this is sort of the data strategy that they sort of generally you know, face. In a lot of enterprises, this is hopefully not that different or not that shocking. A lot of people have warehouses, lakes, a bunch of data sources and databases. Data is moving up and down. Data is moving from left to right. And this is basically leading to a ton of extensive data movement, sometimes almost more than necessary, right? There's a, so much consolidation happening. You know, how often have you guys heard your teams or your company say, we're going to go on a three-year journey, and we're going to consolidate all of this data into a single source of truth. And how often does that ever happen? By the time they get to that third year, another project has sprung up, and now that three is five, or five is seven. And simply because the rapid pace of data is always going to outstrip anybody's ability to ever centralize it. So we really have to sort of change the way that you think about how do I make data accessible to everybody. Third, 
and you'll be uh, hopefully you're not as surprised. But a lot of enterprises are still using very very legacy tools. They aren't going away. I know this shop store doesn't have any of those names anymore, and I'm not going to take those names. But you guys know most companies out there are still running on ten year old technologies, warehouses, things that have coupled storage and compute so tightly that it's so hard to modernize. And they're all running a lot of proprietary formats too, right? You heard Tabula come up and talk about Iceberg, but I, I, I don't know what the adoption rate of Iceberg is truly, right? I mean, you're still dealing with a lot of proprietary formats in enterprises. They're moving and they want to move to open formats, but it's not easy, right? So people need something that is an easy button, right? I don't know if you guys remember back in 1998, maybe this is older than you, some of you guys here, but Dell's been doing this easy button for a really long time. Right? Dude, you got a Dell basically ended with easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. And that's really what we're good at. We've done this over and over again, and that's what we're doing with the Dell Data Lake app. So what is that easy button? It's basically five things. Number one at the top, we have to reduce the amount of data that we're moving. We have to start to get into the habit of first getting access to the data, prototyping with it, exploring it, figuring out how much of it is useful and only moving the 20% of data that's gonna generate 80% of the value because otherwise you're facing a ton of redundancy and a ton of cost. Number two, on the top, sort of on the right, they have to be open and they have to be scale out. Right? Nobody wants proprietary formats anymore. Everybody wants to use Iceberg and Delta Lake. We're here to fully support that. And nobody wants tightly coupled compute and storage. They wanna be able to add more compute when they need to go on performance. They wanna be able to scale their storage when that's what they need to do and they should be able to do that independently of each other. Number three, security and governance, absolutely table stakes. You don't get to run this in any enterprise without SSO, without OAuth, without LDAP, without role-based access control, without masking, without encryption. Like These are things that you hate to do, but they are so important, it's essential, and any platform has to have this. Top left, or sort of on the left, high-performance engines, Obviously, we're here in the sort of Starburst state, so it's a no-brainer that you know Starburst is one of the one of the best engines out there. But people really want choice. People want multiple engines for certain workloads because they, they know each engine is sort of refined and and really developed for certain use cases. It, it, it does a few things really well, and there are other engines for other stuff. And people don't want to use the same thing for everything. And then finally, for IT teams specifically, they need an integrated turnkey solution. Because everything I've talked about so far, they can go and get this on their own. You can go get a storage on your own, go get a compute on your own, get an engine on your own, bring a table format, bring an access control layer, bring an airflow, for example, and run this all on your own. And good luck, because it doesn't just stop there. Go get your operating systems, go get your Kubernetes systems up and running, and hopefully manage everything from one known state to another known state. And I. If, you're, if, if anybody's ever done this at scale, you'll know how hard that is. Things break all the time, right? So somebody's gotta take up that, that mantle and start to make it a lot more simpler for you. So that's really what we're doing, right? So that's, that's really our pitch to the market. It's the Dell Data Lake House. It's, it's rooted in what we do best, which is make things easy from a, com you know, from a complexity perspective. So just like any other lake house, that's what everybody's trying to do. Data all over the place at the bottom, trying to connect it to three things at the top, right? Whether that's BI, AI, or any of the data ecosystem tools where you're trying to you know, manage governance and all that kind of stuff. What happens in the middle? Obviously, lake houses start with formats. So Parquet, Avro, ORC, all the open file formats we're already used to. Iceberg and Delta Lake is gonna be the format that we support in our system as well. You need an engine to start to harness the data, whether that's federated or in the open format in your lake house. And so we've partnered deeply with Starburst. Um, we were introducing the Dell Data Analytics Engine, which is powered by Starburst. So it's, a, it's, a, it's got all the Starburst features in there and a lot more, right? Um, and that's what gets us the federated query engine, the high performance, the, the long running batch queries, as well as the ad hoc queries, data product. I mean, you guys know this really well, right? Now, along with this, of course, you need storage and compute, and we're really, really good at that. That's what Dell's known for. Uh, we have the market-leading products from an S3 object storage perspective called ECS, object scale. We have the world's best file storage system out there called PowerScale. 
And then of course we have compute, right? PowerEdge compute is basically one of the market leaders in servers and we've tailored that to the, the lakehouse workload. So all of this is really great, but there's one piece missing. And the piece that's missing is really what takes this stack and makes it turnkey. And that's a new addition, that's a new introduction called lakehouse system software. This piece is really what converts anything from a DIY stack into something that's an easy button. It takes all this complexity out and it puts all their responsibility into our hands as devs. We're gonna help you support this, we're gonna help you deploy this, we're gonna help you manage this and scale this, right? So if anything goes wrong, you talk to us. And so we're providing enterprise support on pretty much everything. A little bit more about the system software. Um, think of this as essentially a management layer between the Starburst engine on top as well as the compute at the bottom. And it's really what makes, it sort of gives you the cloud experience on premise, right? So it's fully embedded Kubernetes underneath, but again, you don't have to learn that or worry about it, right? How, how many of you guys here have to learn different flavors of Kubernetes for different types of environments and have to learn how to fine tune that, et cetera? All that goes away because we've embedded it underneath. Um, and we're gonna give you a ton of stuff that just comes out of the box, right? Simplified deployment, um, cluster health, cluster alerts, things gonna go down. We're, we're, you know, we'll know before you do what happens in the box, right? If a drive's about to go down, if a node's about to go down, if something's about to break, we're gonna know that because of proactive alerts, and we're gonna have people on the floor helping you manage that so that this never goes down. If you wanna back up and restore this, we're gonna help you do that. So high availability, disaster recovery, advanced security, integration with your LDAP systems in your enterprise, all of that stuff that you really need to do on your own, we're gonna take it away. So think of like, think of taking a lake house that takes like six months to deploy and manage, or deploy and sort of get it operational, down to about 40 days, or, or even less, right, depending on how fast we can go. Um, that's really the peace of mind that we're, we're trying to bring to the, to the customer. Um, and I spoke a lot about IT teams, right? Um, you know, beyond the technology piece of this, there's a big, I say process and operational side of things, which really starts to bite you, um, you know, once you're in, in into some of these deployments, right? So maybe, you know, a couple months in, you don't really realize it, but as you start to grow and scale, this starts to break. Where does it break? It starts to break in your procurement and your legal processes. We're making that simple because now it's Dell for pretty much everything. You get to buy the whole stack from a single vendor. And if you ever work with your procurement team, you'll know how big of an advantage this is because we've been selling to thousands and thousands of enterprises across the globe. So we're, we already have relationships with pretty much every company you can think of, and that makes it super easy for them to just roll this in to everything they're already buying. Number two, we, again, like I said, you call Dell for the whole stack. Everything is 1-800-Dell, which means you don't have to triage, you don't have to worry about whose fault this is. If something breaks in your stack and you think, hey, something's going wrong here, you start to figure out, well, is this a compute thing? Is this a software thing? Is it an OS thing? Who do I call about this? You don't have to worry about all that anymore. You call us, we triage on your behalf. That's a huge savings, right? Number three, we provide security fixes on the entire stack. This is again huge because we're also taking you guys from another known state to another known state, which means we're basically checking every single thing that's happening in the stack. And we're making sure that your next upgrade does not break your system. And number four, we've, we're gonna deploy the whole stack for you. We've got experts who've done this over and over again for years. Um, so we can take something that's on an order, rack and stack, deploy it in your data center, hook it up from your new networking, um, stand up the cluster, hook it up, start it up again, connect it to your net security integration, et cetera. And then you basically get an outcome, right? You get the lake house running, functioning. You don't have to worry about anything else. Um, now, I'll just end with this. Um, from a presentation perspective, uh, you're in good hands, right? You're working with two really, really good companies. Starburst has been in this space for a long time. They have, you know, domain experts. They have the people who have built and they're maintaining Trino. So millions of hours of and so much effort gone into making that project the way it is. And you know how popular it is because it's been running at scale, at astronomical scale with some of these companies at the bottom, right? Um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Lyft, Facebook, that's where it, gen that's where it originated. Um, a lot of financial services industries, a lot of healthcare, retail. So you're in good hands from a, from a software perspective, but you're also in good hands from a hardware perspective, right? Dell, 
is one of the leading infrastructure companies out there. We have we're number one in most of our core markets. So number one in storage, number one in server, number one in hyperconverged infrastructure, etc. Um, so you're working with the best of the best from both sides. So um, that's that's what I was that's what I was trying to get at um, with this presentation. Um, I also want to invite Harry um, Harrison Johnson from Starburst just to talk a little bit about um, what our partnership really means. So I want to welcome Harrison Johnson to the stage. So talk talk to us a little bit about um, you know what makes this partnership so interesting for you guys. Um, you know being in this space sort of in the data space, but now starting to work with you know a very big infrastructure company. What does that look? Like? Yeah. Why is that so important? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think there's a few things. One. A lot of the core principles that we rely on to sort of govern our, our product vision and our, our company vision are aligned with the way Dell is thinking about the world. And I think the, the, the real specific area where the collaboration has, has come together and I think will make a big difference to customers is this idea that transformation for the last decade plus has essentially been tightly coupled, if not um, in, you know, interchangeable with the idea of moving to public cloud. Basically, the market has given customers an ultimatum to transform, you have to move to the public cloud. And don't get me wrong, there are incredible capabilities, first party capabilities on all three hyperscalers, as well as some of the most innovative and, and game changing technologies in the analytics and AI space available as third party services on the public cloud. But the reality remains the same, which is that most of the enterprise still has significant data gravity on prem, right? And, and if not only on prem, certainly in some form of a hybrid architecture. And at Starburst, we're really committed to enabling access, governance, sharing of data, management of data, irregardless of where that data lives, right? And, and similarly, we are committed to providing a, a simple and, and you know, good, solid, clean customer experience, which to date has really been super challenging on prem. And, and you heard the, the term DIY and do it yourself and sort of the, we, we got dragged through the pain a bit in terms of the complexity of managing uh, and creating a cloud-like capability on-prem. And this for us is exactly, I mean, I literally had it down on my notes. This is the easy button. Our goal here is the easy button in terms of enabling organizations to operate in a modern state with a, da a, a data lake house that is built, purpose-built, in fact, for, for on-prem and hybrid workloads. That's great. Um, so another question that we, you know, I get asked often is, Starburst is really good at structured data analytics. Right, it's a it's a SQL query engine at its heart, um, and that's interesting for a lot of AI use cases. But a lot of generative AI, sometimes that's SQL, but a lot of times that's really not. So, what are you guys doing from a generative AI space um, to uh, to help those customers, you know, with, with your product? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I never thought I'd have to preface uh, AI and ML with the word traditional, but you now have to do that. So, the platform has always functioned as a core ingredient for you know, traditional ML AI use cases in, in the form of data wrangling and governance and sort of the discovery process for what do I need to then build a complete and accurate model. Um, where, we're, where we're thinking of going and, and where there's already investments taking place from a generative AI standpoint is intentionally uh, adjacent to our identity as it exists today, right? So that, that sort of falls into three buckets. The first one is, I would argue, table stakes for any platform these days, irregardless of whether you're prem, cloud, or both, which is infusing the customer experience with AI, simplifying the end user and administrative experience with you know, rel relatively or entirely transparent AI from within the platform. Um, the second one is taking our ability to effectively manage uh, data sets that, that live all over the place. You sort of alluded to the fact that it, it's in you know, dozens and dozens of different systems and extending our ability to manage other workload types besides our core competency, which, is, which has been SQL and will remain SQL. And then the last one, um, which is sort of to the, 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 the point you made, which is we, we've done a great job and will continue to do hopefully the best job providing all the capability you need for structured and semi-structured data. But the, the question that we're working on answering and, and bringing to market is how do you create meaningful intersects with the RAG workflow leveraging structured and semi-structured data, which is often some of the more valuable data in the organization, to enrich uh, generative AI programs. So talk to us a little bit more about RAG. Like what, what has it been traditionally and what are you trying to do to change it? Yeah, I think that um, 
where where we're hoping to go is we're hoping to couple the the um, super valuable corporate business data that is that is highly governed down to a granular level and and make that available to programs to provide more um, I guess enrichment or, or increase the accuracy or the relevance of some of the generative AI programs that customers are building, be that internal or external facing. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, I mean, that's interesting because if you guys have seen, and based on Horowitz's latest blog post about um, 16 things, well, it's A16Z, so they're gonna do 16 things, obviously. Um, 16 things that I think is changing generative AI. And I think if you look at the highest, you know, the most popular use cases out there, they tend to be very rag centric. And for people who are not familiar with rag, retrieval augmented generation is a really interesting way to improve the accuracy of generative AI models. Um, but a lot of rag today has been, or at least the demos that you see out there, has been very focused on PDFs, textual data, you know, support manuals, or, or confluence pages, or Jira or GitHub pages. Um, but, it, and you know, when we speak to customers, they, they tend to ask slightly different questions. They tend to ask, you know, tell me the support policy, but also tell me for this particular product, how long is it gonna take me to fix this error? And that how long is is a lot of structured data out there, right? That that data lives in warehouses and databases. So I think that's where um, I, I'm, excited. I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, finding a way to get Starburst, um, you know, embedded into those types of workflows. Cause I think that's what people need to take rack from like here to here. Absolutely. Um, final question for you. Yeah. Um, you know, tons of vendors out here. Uh, what's so special about um, Starburst um, that differentiates you guys from everybody else? And I, I can I can talk a little bit about that too because you know we chose Starburst um, as a partner. But from your perspective, you know what, what really helps you guys stand out? Yeah, I think uh, just the the most critical underpinning is just our intentionality and commitment to making customers successful however they're deployed right the 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 offerings that we have uh for customers uh doesn't instruct you uh where to deploy how to deploy it doesn't tell you where your data gravity needs to be it's really all about uh, interoperability with your existing architecture and then creating an ability for customers to evolve along with that slide that eye chart that, that you had up there earlier it's just like allowing you to evolve your data platform strategy with whatever changes are going to happen on that chart. And then I think in particular, again, I'm going to come back to the same concept that I, I referenced earlier, which is that transformation has been synonymous with public cloud, is we find that most enterprise is going to need a successful data strategy to, to monetize and leverage AI and analytics workloads. And the underpinning for a successful data strategy is, is, a, is a solid data platform. And for, for most enterprise customers, that is going to require the ability to, to govern, access, and, and share data that's on-prem. And in most cases, existing in a hybrid architecture. And this is this offering that we've put together is the only purpose-built on-prem and hybrid data lake house on, in, the, in the market. So I think that, for me, is like the, the standout concept that Starburst brings to the table is, is analytics anywhere. And then I think the extension of that is this partnership by, by you know, providing that simplicity that allows a cloud-like experience, whether or not you are in the public cloud. That's great. That's one of the big reasons why we, you know, why we uh, chose to partner with you guys too. Uh, thanks for joining me yeah. on stage. Um, if you guys want to know more, uh, please head to our website, dell.com slash data management. You know, we're, we're here next, right next to the Starburst booth. Um, so we're happy to answer any other questions, but, um, that's, that's all we have for today. So thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. We have some questions. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to, if you're okay with that, let's ask this answer. Spend more time with John. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, was, I wanted to ask about a previous slide, the one that had like the blue, the stack. Yep. Um, yeah, if you go back. That one right there, yeah. Yep. So I think I caught that the blue areas are where Dell is helping customers. I just wanted to clarify that, like, you know, companies wouldn't choose to use duplicative tools like Looker and Tableau, uh, right? They just use one or the other. Right. And so then the other question I have uh, around that, once that's clarified, is that um, are are you also helping to support the data lake uh, part of things like the Hive Metascore? Oh, yeah. That's, that's a really good question. So first off, yes. 
the, the sort of ecosystem at the top was sort of meant to be a view into what are the things you can hook this up with. So whether that's a Power BI or a Tableau, whatever you guys use, you can work with most, if not all of them. Um, second question about Hive Metastore. Um, so sort of just in this view, and I, we haven't called it out, and maybe that's good feedback that I start, maybe should call it out, but part of the system software piece is also then managing the Hive Metastore. So that's one less thing for somebody to go worry about, stand up another instance of, let's say, a Postgres database and run that Hive Metastore and connect it. All of this comes out of the box, right? So you have your metadata layer that's already in, built in, um, and Starburst obviously, you know, will hook that up, um, store all the metadata about all the file formats, et cetera, tables, um, and you can connect that to, um, you know, connect that to Trino, of course. And then we're also starting to work to open that up to other engines. So, for example, um, if you have another engine instance, or if you have a Spark, or if you have something else, and you want to use that to query the data that's in this lakehouse, for example, you should be able to do that. Right? We're not here to create another, you know, closed wall garden where the only way to access our data is through us. Like that's that's not our intention at all. We know people are going to have multiple engines out there. We have to work with all of that. So we're starting to open, you know, work to open that up a little bit. Um, within our sort of in our facilities. Yeah, I would just say that like there is a significant commitment both from Dell and Starburst to maintain customer optionality and openness. The goal is just to make that real easy, right? It's, it's never going to be to instruct you to use one tool versus the other. It's going to be more about the, the combined offering being really easy to manage from, from an operation. Yeah, I think whenever you speak to customers, they say, make it easy for me, but don't disrespect me in any way. Yeah. So if you want to give me an option, give, give us that, but don't let me not use something else. So, you know, just like an orchestration tool, for example. Yeah, we work with Airflow, but we work with anybody else as well. Um, because we know that people 